All right, Taurus, welcome to your monthly sidereal astrology forecast for February of 2016. My name is Athen, and this is for sidereal astrology. If you are new to this type of astrology, be sure to check the description down below because the signs are different. All right, Taurus, so this month, things still very much unfolding about life path. And for you, it's specifically involving your fourth house of home, of family, and health, or whatever it might be for you individually. So this has been where Jupiter's transited for about the past seven or so months, helping you see the opportunities and possibilities with home, family, health, etc. And now with the North Node still so close to Jupiter from last month, continuing to apply uh, this stuff that you've understood or learned about this, uh, it's because your life path for the next two years is going to be about establishing your roots, uh, whether it's the home family with your body or whatever it might be there. So uh, still plenty of good information, still plenty of perhaps opportunities, maybe on the more internal level because Jupiter's retrograde, but still nonetheless seeing those open horizons with those fourth house things. And of course, being malleable with it since Jupiter is uh, retrograde and learning through experience. Now, on the 5th and 6th, your ruler Venus is going to go over Pluto. So you guys could be going through a transformation this month, clearing out the old energies, making way for the new, which is all about having a deeper connection uh, with life in general because it's all in your 8th house. So Venus in your 8th coming into this month is probably already that you're going to be focused on things that are more meaningful to you. Uh, of transformation, of healing, or just seeing the truth about life, and maybe even connecting on you know deeper levels with relationships or whatnot. Maybe focused on shared resources, maybe for some of you. But whatever it is, being open to change, especially because this is your ruler, I think is going to be a very important emphasis here on the fifth and sixth. Clear out the old, and this happens once a year, by the way. Clear out the old, make way for the new, and through this, you guys will feel uh, quite healed and transformed. I feel like as a result. So it's all about being open to that. Now on the 8th, we have a new, actually one thing I want to say too, is this also involves your routine, right? So your, your health, diet, your regiments could be changing. So be open to those as well. All right. So on the 8th, we've got a new moon in Capricorn. So this is going to be your ninth house, new beginnings with expanding your horizons. The ninth house is about that life path. It's about philosophy, spirituality, university studies. So whatever it is that you feel like is uh, your life path or you feel like helps you understand more about life, uh, it's great to plant new seeds with that. And especially that adventurous spirit, which is the ninth house. So as the month unfolds, it's applying this adventurous spirit and new beginnings involving these opened horizons. And uh, that's going to be a momentum for you with the sun here for the first half in particular, but also a culmination, uh, both in the short term at the end of the month on the 23rd, when we have a full moon here, but also in the next six months in the long term. Now on the 9th, we've got Mars trining up to Chiron. So here there's some healed motivations, probably we're all going to be feeling at least on some level, uh, quite confident maybe. Maybe there's some healing that took place with our ability to take action and to get active. And this is specifically involving your routine with Mars in your sixth house. So coming into this month, you're probably uh, more motivated to take care of the things, maybe get uh, health, diet, regiments in order, maybe assert yourself through work, take care of the work stuff. So all of this should be feeling quite healed and rejuvenated uh, here around the 9th, a few days before, a few days after. Now on the 13th and 15th, going along with that, Mars is going to then be sextiling that north node Jupiter conjunction. So here, uh, this middle part basically channeling this motivation and drive that you'll probably feel rejuvenated with into that life path, into connecting with home, family, past, roots, whatever it is here. And it's just, a, it's just an opening. It's just a gateway for that because it's a sextile. But I feel like that's a really good um, area for you to put that positive energy into. Now on the 14th, the sun goes into Aquarius. So things will be shifting for the second half of the month to more of the career stuff, which is going to be the new beginnings for you in March. And uh, here the focus, I think, will, will still be very much on expanding your horizons and philosophy and whatnot, but um, because Mercury is going to be there. But a definitive shift with uh, what, you, what you're focused on with career, what you're focused on with your legacy or your productive pursuit. So that could be a source of energy for you for the second half, and I think it's a good area of focus in general. Now, like I said, you're going to have planets in that ninth. Mercury is going to be going in there at the same time the sun leaves. So with this, you could be learning actually quite a bit about where I think you were 
thinking about the deeper aspects of life of that eighth house, now much more expansive, maybe more philosophical, maybe about opening those horizons, etc. So good to apply that stuff practically, if it's theories, if it's possibilities, and turning them into that uh, grounded Mercury practical approach. Now Venus follows here on the 17th, your ruler. So there's a big, it's a big transformational month, I would say, with you know your ruler in that eighth house for the first half and then shifting into that ninth, it's really this transformational point where it was much deeper the first half, but then I think a lot lighter and a much more expansive energy for the second half. So enjoying that, seeing that, and um, you know being patient with it, of course, because it's all Capricorn. So for all of us, it's that slow and steady, uh, persistent approach. But you guys already do that anyways when it comes to uh, opportunities in life. So enjoying that nonetheless and seeing where you can tap into that adventurous spirit. Now on the 23rd, Jupiter is going to be opposing up to Chiron. This is a familiar energy from last year, um, an important energy this year though. And it's all about balancing your home and family life stuff that is, again, that life path with the career stuff, which has been going through a healing over the past many years. Uh, there's things helping you connect to uh, how to have more flow, how to do things that are really important to you, to your soul when it comes to your career, which has been Neptune. So seeing that you can, in fact, have a good, stable foundation in your life and how that can directly result in a stronger career front or productive front and vice versa, right? But um, here with the North Node, I think a good focus on the health, on the home, the family can really set some good foundations with that. And I think you can feel quite healed and rejuvenated as a result. All right, so then we have a full moon on the 23rd, which is going to be in Leo in that fourth house of yours. So there are things culminating with your home, family, health, whatever else is a foundation of your life uh, from over the past six months when you last had a new moon here. So it's good to, at the very least, be aware of it and use this time period around the 23rd to uh, learn more about uh, this area of life because the insights usually are quite strong at this time. Now it is gonna be forming a T-square up to Saturn, this full moon, so it's important to stay nice and grounded with it, see the long road, and again, see where you can have faith and trust and really listen to that soul, uh, what your soul guidance is telling you in regards to your career, in regards to your productive things, and all of that, because Neptune there is still trying to make its you know way through to you, so to speak, to have more of that soul-fulfilling and spiritual fulfillment through your career, and it's usually through giving and sharing and um, you know uh, helping others in, in, in some way. Now, the month tops off with the sun going over that Neptune, so it could be specifically emphasized on the 28th, and so it might be a good time to take some time to rest and, again, have that uh, releasing of the reins, perhaps, to allow the universe and God to guide you into this new direction with career stuff, which will be unfolding for you more so in March. All right, Taurus, I hope you guys have a great month. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.